Hello, my name is Sean Ennis from Ennis Management and thank you for joining me here on the Creative Collective and today I'm honored to be joined by a very special guest he's a singer and songwriter from Waynesville, Ohio Richard Lynch Hey Sean, thanks for having me uh, Thank you so much for joining me So let's start with how did you get your start in music? Well, uh, at a young age, I guess you might say I was uh, kind of born into the, to the traditional country music. My dad was an incredible singer and entertainer, and uh, I grew up in the household. Every morning I would get up and dad would be drinking his coffee and having that great old country music play, playing there on the radio. And uh, uh, I just knew at a young age, since my dad did it, that's something that I wanted to do. Now, what genre of music do you consider your work to be? Oh, without a doubt, it's traditional country music. That's my, where my heart is, that's where my love is, and uh, um, you know, I just want to keep that traditional sound alive and well out there. And can you describe the traditional country music sound? Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a genre where you hear steel guitars and fiddle and three-part harmony and a storyline, and actually, it's 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 music that comes from the heart. It's uh, you know when you hear something that touches on your emotions, whether it's ha happy or sad, whether it's exciting or whether it's you know whatever. It's it's real life, everyday song sung for the hardworking real American out there. And are you self-taught as a musician? Yeah, pretty much. I, I learned a lot from my dad, of course, watching him. And then I went in high school, and we had a, I had a couple buddies that uh, were interested in music at a, as a young age in high school, and so I learned a lot from them. But, yeah, I don't have any, you know, particular training in music or anything. It's all pretty much by ear and uh, by association with people that I hang around with. <clears throat> Now, what music or artists have had an influence on you? Oh my goodness. I grew up listening to people like Conway Twitty and Merle Haggard and George Jones and, and Mel Street and, and Mel Tillis and all those wonderful artists. But when I got a little older and I you know, kind of became my own, um, my own artist, you might say, or started doing my own thing, I really started loving a guy named Keith Whitley and, and George Strait and uh, Alan Jackson, those three artists there were probably my biggest influence uh, as far as time, you know, me being professional and playing myself, those probably, uh, those three artists were probably my biggest influences. And what about those particular three artists really had an impact on you? Well, they... They resonated with me because I, I love a, I love a good, strong, powerful vocal. And when you hear a heartfelt country song, and they put every fiber of their of their emotion in that song with a strong, powerful vocal, I really it really overwhelms me. And and those three really put a lot of their uh, every bit of their emotion into every song that they do. And, I just really enjoy um, how they deliver a particular song. And you mentioned that you initially got involved in music, uh, working with your father. What made you want to become an artist? Well, I've seen at a young age that, you know, my dad was very successful and very talented. And uh, probably the, the most thing, the one thing that really stuck out with me was I was eight years old, and it was the first time I got to go see my dad perform at a live concert. And my mom took, took me, and uh, we were out there in the audience. And we were enjoying the concert, and uh, I, I realized that my dad is playing music with this guy that I watch on TV every Saturday night. His, his name was Porter Wagner. And uh, I thought, well, my dad really must be something if he gets to perform with this fellow we watch on TV every uh, every Saturday night. And unbeknownst to me, he probably had played a half hour or so. He pointed down to my mom and said, hey, send Richard up here 
on the stage with me. Now keep in mind, I'm eight years old, so I run up on the stage and I do an old Buck Owens song. I got a tiger by the tail, and uh, the as you might imagine, an eight-year-old kid ever singing with his dad, it was well received by the crowd. So I was bit pretty early by that country music bug, and uh, I learned so much from my dad, and I, I realized that my dad was very, very special. So there was no way I was going to do anything else in life. I was going to, uh, you know, just in, just do what my dad did, work on a farm and play music. How would you describe your music? Heartfelt. Um, I write songs that I, that's something mostly I I have uh, experienced. Uh, you know, I, I see a, a storyline, or I've lived a, a particular uh, event, or lived a particular song, and I just put it into words. I, I, I put it into music, and I put those that experience in the music and the words. And I, I try to when I write a song, I try to put it as truthful as possible. And how important is storytelling in your music? It's very important because I want to, I want to create, you know, a, a situation to where if the, if the audience listens to that song, I want them to be able to relate with that song. In other words, um, it, it, if I'm singing a song about you know, a honky tonk, or if I'm singing a song about an old feed store, or if I'm singing a song about an old farm, I want those folks to be able to almost be there as if they're in the same experience or they're in the same time with, you know, as I'm writing it. I want them to be able to feel the lyrics and understand the lyrics that I'm, that I'm singing about. Can you talk about some of the joys and challenges of songwriting? Well, the, the best joy for me is to, to write a song and be performing the song, and the audience that you're you're performing for is singing along with you. That that's pretty spectacular. Uh, you know, I I've, uh, I've experienced that quite a bit here in the last year, maybe year and a half. And uh, there's nothing more gratifying as a songwriter to have your songs sing back to you while you're performing them. It's pretty special. And are there any challenges to songwriting? Oh yeah, you always want you always wonder if the songs you wrote and the lyrics. Uh, as a songwriter, you always wonder: could my lyrics have been a little better, or should I have said this, or should I have placed my word here? But you know, um, you can beat yourself up and wonder and wonder, or you know, you can just put that song out there and 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 try to deliver a good message, but, you know, just write the best you can and, and hope for the best. You know, I, I always want to learn and I always want to get better at songwriting, but I think the best way to do that is just continue to write, record, and uh, I think automatically you'll get better just by doing it over and over again. And can you describe your music making process? Oh, yeah. I... I I get little ideas, you know, some, sometime, you know, I'll hear a conversation and somebody will say a, a clever little line, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's a really good idea, that's a really good cl clever line, and I'll write it down, and then sometimes that, that line, I can put myself in a story and tell the whole story within, you know, a half hour or an hour, sometimes I write that little, that little line down, and it might take me you know, six months or a year, just kind of looking back on my little line that I have wrote. So there's really, there's really no certain process. I just try to feel the song and and build the storyline around that. And what inspires you to make music? Just emotion. If I if I hear a, a, you know a heartfelt line, or if I see something that really touches my heart. You know, uh, by that I mean I heard I heard the comment one breath away. Someone made that comment recently, and I thought, my goodness, what a powerful statement! So I wrote that down, and I grabbed my guitar, and within 20 minutes or a half hour, I had written that song 
just for the fact that I let my emotions run and uh, I, I let my my songwriting I just trusted in my songwriting and I I don't know where the melody came from I just I just grabbed my guitar and the melody came so I can't really explain how that melody came but the words was pretty pretty dominant at that you know particular time when I wrote that song and is that pretty common in your music that you that you pull from everyday life and things that are going on around you? Oh, without a doubt. You know, I, I I'm, I'm always try to be observant and and see little things. And uh, you know, I, I listened to Chris Christopherson years ago, and he made the comment um, when I was a young guy, and I never forgot it. Do as much as you can to tell the truth whatever song that you're writing about, whatever topic you're writing about in the song. And if you tell how the story went, it's easier for that song to connect with others out there. So I always try to keep it, you know, pretty truthful. Can you talk about the experience of writing and releasing a really personal song? Well, to be in a studio at any level is gratifying beyond belief. It's so, it's so, uh, it makes me very proud to be in the studio and record these albums. But when we just released our brand new album called Think I'll Carry It On, and the gratification of having known that we wrote every song on there, um, it's probably the biggest, the most most I've ever had about being having taken pride in an album because every song on there I wrote or co-wrote. So it's great. It's given me a level of uh, appreciation and a level of pride that I, I've never had before. And why was um, being so involved in the writing process on this album? Why is that? Why has that been so important to you? Well, you know, I mentioned earlier how it was really great to be in a studio. And and the songs come out really good. I, this is my I've recorded three other previous albums, and but if I wanted something to show that you know in ten years, twenty years, thirty years from now, that if they hear this album, they got the real Richard. They got they got the they got the songwriter and the singer. And I wanted that song, that album, to be as personal from me as an artist as possible and I don't think you can make it any more personal than uh, you know being the writer on the song so that was really something that I was excited about doing and that's why I've taken so much uh, you know pride in that particular project. Now can you talk about a song that you've written or released that you're extremely proud of? tell you a song that I'm extremely proud of and I wish I would have wrote it. <laughs> My buddy uh, Billy Yates, singer-songwriter in Nashville, wrote a song called A Better Place. And it's one of those songs that the first time I heard it as a demo, I knew I wanted to record it. And I, I got in the studio and the song was so powerful. Well, when the song was released to radio, at that time, it had set a record at 32 weeks in a row at number one and uh, on the independent charts. And to my knowledge, it's never that has never been broken for 32 weeks in a row. So that was very, um, very gratifying. And uh, like I said, I wish I would have wrote that song. Wow, that is incredible. And can you, so can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Because um, you're, you're kind of in a rare air of being an artist to release a song that has been that well received. You know, I, I, I really am. I, I, and I know how fortunate I am. Um, you know, I, I know how fortunate I am because I've got a, a wife that supports and promotes everything I do. And... You know, to be successful is wonderful, but to be successful and have a uh, 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 an immense amount of support at home, I, I don't know how it gets any better than that. You know, we we made the comment. I made the comment to her several years ago 
she said, you know, Richard, we ought to just get out here and just see where the music takes you. Let's get out here on the road. Let's record an album. Let's do what we can do. And I told her, I said, okay, I'm all in. But if you don't go, I don't go. And so it's worked out extremely well. And like I said, if, you know, if we can have some success and and be uh, proud of each other, I, I don't know how it gets any better than that. Can you talk a little bit more about the support and what your wife contributes to your music career? Oh yeah, and we we have been friends for over thirty years, and we've been married now for oh we've been together all over thirteen years. So we've had uh, a lifelong, or not a lifelong, very long. Uh, respect for one another and uh, you know we had a long friendship and then we became you know involved but I think the fact that we had that e immense friendship for all those years made it to where we have a respect for one another that's uh, that I've never had before and if we put that respect toward the music and we put that drive because she has a lot of ambition and I have a lot of ambition so if we put that drive and that respect and that and that uh, you know that ambition towards the music, I don't think they can stop us because we're doing a lot of things that independent artists ain't supposed to do. I mean we're we've been on WSM Grand Ole Opry Radio. We've been our music's being played in over forty countries. We're on seven or eight hundred radio stations. That's that's almost unheard of for a independent artist. That's you know, that we did it all on our own, so I owe it all to her. That's truly wonderful. Now, how important is a strong online presence to your music career? Oh, the online is huge. You know, we, we get a lot of traditional and, you know, really um, um, just regular radio stations, and I'm thankful we, that we do. But without the online experience to where you know, we can get our music out there played virtually all over the world. I, we wouldn't be having near the success that we have now. It's, I never, I can really, it's hard to get my head wrapped around this. My wife will say, hey, Richard, um, Wolfgang from Germany sends a hello to you. Loves your new song. And then she'll say, such and such from Ireland is sending a message because they just got your new album. And, and on and on, somebody from West Virginia, somebody from New Mexico, somebody from Australia. And it blows my mind, and it wasn't for the internet and the fact that, uh, you know, all the social media has, you know, exploded. We, you know, we wouldn't have near the success, but it's created an immense amount of success. And um, I'm thankful that my wife and our, our manager has really, uh, you know, dove, dove into that because it's, it's the reason that we're having the, the national and international success. And I, I want to continue with that because, again, you mentioned being an independent artist. A lot of independent artists even struggle with getting feedback or just getting people to listen to their music. So being that you're, you're a musician who's really found a wide audience of people that really have appreciation for the art you create. Can you talk about what that feels like? Well, the only way I can explain that is that I think the, the music that I'm performing is that traditional country and there's such a need and a hunger for those country music fans that have always been a traditional fan. There's such a need for them to find that artist who, who will give them what they're looking for. I think I have came around at a right time when, um, you know, the, there's the, the modern country music is not necessarily reflecting what the folks that follow me are giving. So the Internet, in that sense, has created another amount of opportunity for me because the, the, the true country music fan are going to search out and find that sound that they're looking for. And it just so happens that I'm fortunate enough to where you know, I come around at a time where a lot of folks are clamoring and looking for that traditional sound. So that's there's the reason that I really think that I'm having the success is because I'm 
giving folks something out there that they just can't get on mainstream. And explain to me what you feel is is different from your traditional style of country to to mainstream. Well, I think the only difference is the fact that you know I I don't hear a whole lot of heartfelt emotion in today's newer country music. Um, they they tend to have a conversation of. A pickup truck, red dirt, and drinking a can of beer. And that's all good, that's all well, and that's all fine, but there's a whole lot more to, you know, um, the, the listener out there than that. It, you know, a lot of folks have been, a lot of the writing has just been dumbed down. You, they haven't allowed the great stories, the great songs to be told or written anymore like what's in the traditional country sound. So, you know, I, I think I think my music is letting somebody kind of reminisce a little bit how I used to be. Because I, I sing about, you know, farms and, 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 and tractors, and I sing about old feed stores, and I sing about, you know, heartbreak and heartache and things that really, you know, are, are really an emotional topic, and I, I try to sing about those topics that really aren't on the radio today. Do you believe it's important to study older music? Oh yeah, I, I, I think I think I have a respect for I have a respect for all music. Don't get me wrong. I, if somebody is talented and they're a blues artist or they're a rock and roll artist or they're a hip hop artist, I have the utmost respect for them. Um, and and. You know, it's, you, we all can learn from other artists. But the biggest thing for me is the fact that I, I, I really don't like the fact that they're, they've taken my genre and and kept the name but left the genre behind it. <laughs> so, so there's a thing, but it's really important to study old, older music and learn from everybody's, uh, you know, everybody's little uh, past, you might say, because, heck, you know, uh, I've been influenced by the, the country artists, but I've also loved, you know, old Southern rock and roll. I, I love old 50s rock and roll. So, yeah, it's really important to be knowledgeable of other genres. Are you planning to collaborate in the future with any artists? Well, I'm always, uh, I'm always interested in doing duets with other artists. We, we've done three or four uh, duets with some major stars in the last couple albums. Um, yeah, I would I would love to get back in the studio again with Rhonda Vincent. She was, what an incredible singer and uh, entertainer she is. And uh, yeah, but it's always something that I'm, that I'm open to. But, but to say that we've locked an a, a artist in for a, a duet right now, we don't have that on the horizon. We're just always open to that idea for sure. What do you enjoy about collaborating on music with other artists? Uh -huh. Well, this is a really cool thing that you asked because we just did a duet with a, uh, a, uh, a young artist out of uh, the Faroe Islands, which is a European um, country up around uh, Scotland and that way. And uh, I was in the studio with that gentleman and I I got to see how country music touched people from across the pond, and I got to see how much those folks enjoyed, you know, what we what we call country music. They don't have a lot of that particular sound over there as far as the ability to write songs. So to be in a studio with a European artist who loves the same music that I do was a really entertaining for me and for him. And uh, you know, I learned a lot from him, and he learned a lot from me, just for the fact that he's in his own artist. But he has that same connection with me that we love that traditional sound. That was a lot of fun. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, they say music is the universal language. That's exactly right, and that's proof positive. We we got to go to we, we went to Asheville, North Carolina, and I recorded it. Uh, my song with him, he flew over here, him and his entourage, and it was so entertaining to watch him and his friends and his manager come out of the hotel and 
they would grab their guitars and they would just sing in Pharaohese. Now, I don't pretend to understand one thing, one word, how Pharaohese is, but the music was phenomenal. And they had a big crowd gather around in the hotel, and the crowd really enjoyed what they were doing. And uh, I told them after we got through singing, I said, guys, I don't know what you said, but I sure like the way you sang it. So it was fun. <laughs> That's great. What is your dream collaboration? If you could collaborate... Oh, if you collaborate with any artist, I would love to. I would love to collaborate with George Strait. And why is that? He's been my all-time one of my heroes from a from a youngster, and uh, you know he still has uh, that appreciation for you know the horses and the, the country way of life and the songs he sings has been around for you know a couple generations now. He's had. 61 or 62 number one hits. Yeah, I'd like to say I did an old request of my old buddy, old George Strait. That would be pretty good bragging rights. <laughs> that would be terrific. What kind of music is your favorite to perform? Oh, gosh, I love traditional country music. Now, I'll tell you what. When we play these old honky-tonks and, and in nightclubs... We play a little bit of southern rock and roll when we get the kids and the youngsters up dancing and everybody having a big time. That's a lot of fun. But without a doubt, when I when I play my traditional country music, I, I want to make that connection with that fan. And you know you can, you know when you've made that connection because they they have uh, they have just listened when they, when you made the connection with that fan, they have just listened to you and they have that look in their eye like, oh, I get it. I know what you're saying about now. So, without a doubt, it's traditional country music. And can you talk about a past memorable performance? Well, yeah. Um, probably the, the most memorable here recently, we uh, we got to do a show with uh, Ronnie McDowell, and I've always been a friend, a fan of his. And Ronnie is an entertainer. Uh, a league all his own. He has the antics. You know, he, he can he can really he can perform. He's known to be an Elvis Presley imitator. As a matter of fact, he's been in movies and everything else. And to do a show with Ronnie and uh, to be in the studio with Ronnie and to be with somebody of that significance and I I, I can honestly tell you I can call Ronnie McDowell my friend. That was probably the most memorable performance that, I, that I've had in a long time. He just takes the, the audience in the palm of his hand and you're just mesmerized by him. So I, I just really enjoyed that, that performance probably better than anything in the last several years. What are your music career goals? You know, I, I, always, I always want to do better. And every album I do, I want it to be a little bit better than the last one I recorded. I always want to learn. I always want to be as good a musician and a singer as I possibly can. Um, I've achieved an awful lot in life. Um, I would like to think that there's more to achieve. Um, but I, I always want to be humble. I always want to be just an old farm boy who loves his music. And I, I always want to achieve the fact that I can learn and be better. What do you feel are the characteristics of great or groundbreaking music? Oh, what a question. Groundbreaking music. I, I think the best way to answer that is that as I continue to write songs, um, you naturally get better. I, like, I have a guitar player named Tim Bennington and my little brother Robert. We were sitting around a table here, all oh, probably at the end of March, somewhere along that, and I had a song idea in my head, and we all three sat around and continued until we wrote that particular song. The song was called Back in 1953, and it's a song in reference to my dad and the guitar that my dad gave me as a kid. I don't know if it's groundbreaking, but every time I hear that song, I remember the line that Robert wrote, my brother. I remember the couple lines that Tim wrote. And I remember 
feeling this sense of an immense amount of pride. And when people hear that song back in 1953, they have a uh, they have an appreciation for that era. So uh, that's as close to groundbreaking as I think I've ever wrote it. But I, I want to always write songs like that. Yeah, I mean, I really think that's that's the power of music. You know, when you hear a song and it can, you know, change your mood. You know, people listen to music when they're working out or if you're feeling sad and you put out and you put on a song that makes you want to get up and dance. That that's really the power, the incredible power of music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever emotion that that song can bring, whether it's happy dance stuff or whether it's an emotion that, you know, you you want to connect with with a personal level. Music is the most powerful force I've ever experienced. What do you value more, creativity or perfect execution? Creativity. I'll never be perfect. I get in the studio and I still ain't perfect. But, <laughs> but you know what's amazing? These country music fans... They're pretty forgiving. They they want to be entertained. They want to be around a you know around a person that they can call their friend. They want to be they want to feel like they can connect with that artist. So without a doubt, creativity is by far the most important thing for me. And uh, you know, flawlessness has never been one of my one of my better traits. Anyhow, <laughs> what is more important to you, fame or credibility? credibility. You know, if, if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, if there's a, if there is a, uh, an appointment need made, if there is uh, a friend that I tell somebody that I'm going to do, you can bet that I am definitely going to do that. There is not something that uh, I take lightly. I'm, I was raised in a household where your word is everything. You only have your word. So when you when you break that uh, that bond with people, then you know you're not you're not to be trusted. So without a doubt, credibility is by far my most important thing. What type of satisfaction do you get from making music? Oh my goodness, there's nothing better when you sit down and, and, and I I've been listening to my new album almost every day when I'm in the truck and and we're traveling somewhere. Me and my brother Robert's been working on on a couple projects here local. When we're not on the road, so we put the radio, we put the truck uh, on in high gear. We get out on the road and we put that CD in the truck and just sit back and listen. And I, I pinch myself. I'm like, this song's phenomenal. And, and I gotta tell myself, man, I wrote this song. <laughs> that, that is the most gratifying thing that I can I can possibly mention to you. Now, can you talk about? A challenge that you faced in your music career and how you've been able to overcome that challenge? I think the biggest challenge is, um, you know, the airplay thing. We, we get a lot of airplay um, from all over the world, but sometimes in your own neck of the woods, I mean, you know, there is three or four really good country stations around our area. And we, we get very little airplay from them. And a friend of mine explained that to me. He said, you know, you can't be, uh, you, you can't be, I forget the exact word he used. Um, in other words, you know, you can't be all of that to the folks that you grew up with. You know, I, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. For this, I guess I'm just old Richard. But it'd be really nice to have a little more airplay locally than what we're getting. Uh, it's really the only thing that I can think of that would be, you know, along those along those uh, lines that you asked me there. Now, what advice could you give for an aspiring musician who's just starting out in their music career? Surround yourself with people that believe in you, support you, trust you, and you trust them because. The whole world's got plenty of negativity out there. They'll tell you you can't do this and you can't do that. You surround yourself with people that believe in you and you'd be amazed how 
how much success will come your way. That's really great advice. Can you share your social media links? Yeah, just go to richardlynchband.com and uh, that's probably the best way to find out about us where we're, where we're playing on our different uh, social media sites, all our different uh, you know, music and concerts and merchandise. But I would say richardlynchband.com would be the best way to find us. Is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering financial or emotional support to you during your music career? Well, the financial support's been me and my wife, so uh, thanks, honey. I appreciate your help. <laughs> the emotional support is thousands and thousands of people out there because they they connect emotionally with the music, and I I, I really couldn't I couldn't name break it down and how many people I would I would have to thank that that support all the music, but. You know, there's a lot of great emotional folks out there that put their heart and soul in everything we do. Is there anything else you'd like to promote or share? Well, I would like to say a very heartfelt thank you for uh, letting us be a part of your show. And, uh, you know, we have a place called the Keeping the Country Farm in Waynesville, Ohio. And uh, during the warm weather months, June, July, August, September, October, we do a show at our at our farm here at the Keeping the Country Farm, and we bring uh, a Grand Ole Opry star to perform with us once a month. So we'd like to just kind of share that out there, and if people want to come to a country music concert in the country environment, we would love to have all your listeners come by and stop by and see us sometime. So just check out the Keeping the Country Farm here at the Waynesville, Ohio. Yeah, you can find that also at the RichardLynchBand.com. All right, I would like to give a very big thank you to my special guests for joining me today here on The Creative Collective. As always, write your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, as well as music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com.